Hi, I'm Mr. Simons, and in this video, we're going to look at the Lorenz curve and the Gini coefficient. Now, it's going to get pretty wild, so let's get started. When we're talking about the Lorenz curve, what we're talking about is a measure that economists have come up with that looks at how income and wealth are distributed through an economy. Essentially, we're saying is income and wealth distributed pretty fairly where everybody gets a share or is it pretty unequal where only the richest and most wealthy people control the bulk of income and wealth? If we're looking at a straight up definition, what we're saying is that a Lorenz curve, it's just a graph. That's what we mean by a graphical representation. And what it looks at is income and wealth distribution. And what it does is it plots the increase in population along one axis against the increase in income or wealth against the other. So let's have a look at how this is displayed. The Lorenz curve looks like this. And this graph is courtesy of Dixon and Omani um, from 2017. So you can see here that we've got the line of equality. And this is this line that stretches this dotted line. And then our Lorenz curve is this curve that comes this way. So on the one side, what we've got is we've got the proportion of the population. So we've got 0% of the population, 20% of the population, 40%, 60%, 80%, and 100%. And then on the other axis, we've got their share of income. So 20% of all of the income, 40% of all of the income, 60, 80, and 100. So if we're looking at the curve, what we say is that it starts at zero. And at this point zero, no one in the population has no share of income, right? So no one in the population has no share of income. And then if we go all the way to the end of the curve, we can see that 100% of families earn 100% of all of the income in society. If we follow this line of equality or line of perfect equality, that what this does is it shows us what would happen if income or wealth were distributed equally across the whole of the population. That's what that line of perfect equality is showing us. So the bottom 20% of families, they get 20% of income and wealth. The bottom 40% receive 40%. The 60% receive 60%. So what we've got is we've got a perfectly equal distribution of income across the economy. And that is what the line of perfect equality shows us. But we know that in society, things are not always equal or even close to being equal. So there we've got the line of perfect equality. And if we put some numbers in, and then what we're saying is we're saying that in society, actually our distribution is not the same as perfect equality. In fact, it looks something more like this, that we don't actually sit on the line of perfect equality when we're talking about how income is actually distributed in an economy. And this line, sorry, this curve, that the Lorenz curve shows the actual distribution of income, remember the symbol Y, or wealth in an economy, compared to that line of perfect equality. If, um, so we've got two columns here. We've got, if this situation, then that occurs. The further the Lorenz curve is away from the line of perfect equality. So just to give you a quick uh, reminder of what that looks like. So the further away this curve is from the line of perfect equality, then the more unequal uh, income or wealth distribution is in that economy. If we look at the next one, it says, if the Lorenz curve shifts inward, if it shifts to the left, and I'll put this in red. Well, that means that the Lorenz curve is going closer to that line of perfect equality. So what we're gonna see is a more equal income or wealth distribution. 
And then the final situation says, if the Lorenz curve shifts outward, so to the right, and let's put this in yellow. So we were red and then we moved to yellow. So if the Lorenz curve shifts outward, we're going back to that first situation. Okay, so income or wealth distribution is more unequal. Okay, so yellow is not amazing to see. I probably won't use that again, but you get the picture. As the curve shifts, we get a different situation in terms of income and wealth inequality in an economy. If we talk about the Gini coefficient, what we can do is we can give this inequality a number. It's a mathematical expression. So it tells us in numerical form how unequal income or wealth distribution is in an economy. Okay, so the Gini coefficient, if we're looking at this diagram here, the Gini coefficient is equal to this distance here, right? The distance between the line of perfect equality and the Lorenz curve over the total area underneath that line of perfect equality. So the Gini coefficient equals A over A plus B. That tells us the degree of inequality in an economy. So let's do another example about um, if this, then that. But this time we're looking at the Gini coefficient. So if there was perfect inequality, if uh, one person in society earned all of the income or on, owned all of the wealth in an economy, then the Gini coefficient well, that would be equal to one. And then if there was perfect equality in society where everyone had an equal share of income or wealth, then the Gini coefficient would be equal to zero, right? There's a smaller distance between the Lorenz curve and that line of perfect equality. So in general, the smaller the Gini coefficient, the more equal income or wealth distribution in an economy. Okay, that covers our discussion of the Lorenz curve and the Gini coefficient. I told you it would be wild and it definitely was wild. Thank you very much for watching.